number of constitutional conferences there. Or you can also. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. You bet. Um, Mr. Butler, count one alleges solicitation, aggravated criminal sexual assault, charge alleges on or about June of 2015, you knowingly committed the intent that the offense of aggravated criminal assault be committed, uh, encouraged or requested print, warn, and legal committed act of sexual penetration with at least definitely a person who was severely or probably intellectually disabled. Sir, there's a second charge, like solicitation, aggravated criminal sexual assault. Sir, it the same time period, June 2015, that you knowingly with the intent of the offense of aggravated criminal sexual assault be committed, encourage or request a friend of warrant and be able to an act of sexual penetration with a person over 60 years of age by the use or threat of force. <clears throat> Sir, there's a, uh, on a third count. Solicitation aggravated criminal sexual assault alleges part about June 2015, you knowing with the and with the intent that the offense of aggravated criminal sexual assault be committed, encourage or requested Fred Warren to commit an act of sexual penetration with a person who is severe, severely or intellectually, or excuse me, profoundly intellectually disabled. Um, there's a count four which alleges solicitation aggravated criminal sexual assault. Service alleges on or about June 2015 that you did knowingly and with the intent that the offense of aggravated criminal sexual assault be committed. Encourage or request that Trent Warren to commit an act of sexual penetration over 60 years of age by the use of threat of force. Count 5 alleges uh, aggravated criminal, uh, I'm sorry, solicitation of aggravated criminal sexual assault. Sort of alleges June 2015 you knowingly and with the intent of the offense of aggravated criminal sexual assault be committed. Uh, encouraged or requested Don Terrell Netter to commit an act of sexual penetration with <laughs> personal security or profoundly intellectually disabled. Uh, finally, in count six, um, it's alleged solicited aggravated criminal sexual assault, it's alleged June 2015. You didn't know him with the intent of defense of aggravated criminal sexual assault was committed, encouraged or requested Don Terrell Netter to commit an act of sexual penetration with okay, the person over 60 years. But the bond will continue. It's still $1 million. 10% of that amount, Mr. Butler, will be necessary uh, for your release. Mr. Sutter, further for your claim. Nothing, sir. Anything else today, Mr. Sutter? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Sir, that's all we're here today. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yo, YouTube, YouTube. What's going on? Trey back again, hit you with a video. Now, this video right here comes straight out of Urbania. Illinois. And if I didn't say it right, Urbana, somebody can tell me to say it how to, in the comment section, if you will. Anyway, good thing that this story didn't come out of Chicago, Chirac, if you will, however the hell you all want to call it. Well, we have a guy who's supposed to be in the care of, who, well, who's supposed to be taking care of an elderly woman. He was a CNA, and he basically was a 32-year-old black male, and the woman was 90 years old. Now, of all things that this man could have did to offend this woman and to assault this woman he decided to call one of his buddies over you know and catfish some people off of facebook just to come over there to his job and sexually assault this 90 year old woman with dementia that's a sad thing is that anybody knows that anybody in their family or people that you know have been around that have dementia you know it's a very sad situation to see a person like that then also even you know just uh, erase the dementia part, just the fact it's a 90-year-old person. And, and along with age, as you all know, we all know, it comes with health issues. And, you know, time done took a toll on your body. And then you have a serious illness such as dementia to go with it, to mix with the 90-year-old body. And you have somebody taking advantage of you. Now, that right there is a sad situation when you cannot even trust the main people who's supposed to look after these people. That's why I tell people, if you have people, no matter if they're in jail, prison, or your, uh, your relatives that's in these nursing homes, it can be group homes or whatever. Make sure you check on your people if you love them because you never really know what's going on. But quite naturally, unless somebody went in there and caught them in an act or they had the woman to do some kind of uh, vaginal exam, they wouldn't have never really known what these guys was doing because the woman had dementia. Um, so I'm going to read a snippet from this story and I'll give my opinion surely as we go. Champagne man gets 30 years for molesting care facility resident. And why they said Champagne, I guess that's a little place up there. A Champagne man convicted of molesting a 90-year-old resident of a memory care facility in Champaign more than two years ago has been sentenced to 30 years in prison. Duntrell Netta, 24, last 
last of the 2300 block of sophomore drive will have to serve at least 25 and a half years of that bill 25 and a half years of that but was given credit for a year and three months that he's been in custody which ain't gonna amount to shit in the end because trust me that 24 that 25 that's gonna be a long stretch right there but they might be having flying cars by the time he get out in early december a jury convicted netter of aggravated criminal sexual assault attempted aggravated criminal sexual assault and conspiracy to commit aggravated criminal sexual assault so he just a sexual predator all the way around the board the charges stem from a scheme devised by a former Bigford College employee, Shannon Butler. Butler, I mean. And if a guy named like Shannon, if his name ain't Shannon Tatum, you better watch out. To invite young men to the facility to have sex with women they're afflicted with dementia while he took pictures of the activity. If you don't tell me that right there, man, was possessed right there, if that ain't some kind of sexual perversion right there, I don't know what the hell is. This man had Jezebel, Beelzebub, Satan, and Lucifer himself all up in his mind, making him do this stuff. How in the hell can you get off taking pictures of women in their old age and, and basically crippled? You know what I'm saying? Just just crippled in the mind, even if it's not in the body. How, how do that satisfy you? I guess he had the same mentality just like a rape victim do. It don't matter. You know, the condition of the person, as long as you get your rocks off, if you will. That's how you know he's twisted. Now, Butler, 28, of Champaign, is serving a 14-year prison sentence after pleading guilty in July 2016 to, solic to solicitation to commit aggravated criminal sexual assault. He admitted arranging for Netter and two other men to have sex with three different women at the facility at the 1002 South Staley Road Center in summer of 2015. Evidence showed that late at night he let them in the building where he was the sole caretaker on duty in that area. So you mean to tell me they ain't had nobody else there? They didn't have no women there? What what a supervisor there? What a manager there? I mean, damn, was only one person working at nighttime? I mean, shit. Whoever got some people up in that place, they need to go take them out and put them people somewhere else. Now, hopefully, there's a special place in hell for people like Shannon Butler. I don't know why I thought about that, Mary J. So there's a special place in hell for you. Anyway, said Judge... Tim, Tom DeFonis, who stepped in to handle Nettles' case. He must have been listed to that Mary J. back there in his judge chambers and stuff. Judge Heidi Ladd previously accepted guilty pleas from Butler and co-defendants Dean Goble, 23, and Trent Warren, 20. Some young, dumb assholes just done threw their damn life away. You mean to tell me you 23 and you 20 and you can't go find you a damn woman? You know, you ain't got no bae, you ain't got no girlfriend or nothing? I mean, you're that damn thirsty? Wow. Goble and Warren each pleaded guilty to attempted aggravated criminal sexual assault and received prison sentences of 14 and 10 years respectively. Netta's attorney, Michael McClellan, urged defendants to sentence Netta to no more than what the other men received. He said Netta fell victim to what many young men do, the desire to have sex, but he argued that it was Butler who approached his client in a duplicitous duplicitous way telling Nettle that he had an opportunity to be with a woman around age 50. What kind of guy is Nettle? Nettle is Nettle mentally retarded. Did he take advantage of this man? Because if that's the case, they need to charge the Butler with some extra crimes. You know what I'm saying? For uh, aggravated coercing a dumbass person to commit a crime. How about putting that on the books? Now, all that Duntrell knows at the moment is he's got a chance to get more sexual experience. This is a crazy ass story, but it's true. <laughs> Damn. That is a desire that has led many young men to do things that in the calm light of the day they would never contemplate doing, he said. I guess it's true. The freaks come out at night. Now, McClellan then reminded the funders that Netta, who continued to proclaim his innocence, was linked to only one act with one woman. But Assistant State's Attorney Matt Bannett called Netta's actions calculated and despicable and committed against one of the most vulnerable victims in our society, which is true. Now, Bannock asked the judge to sentence Netta to 50 years in prison. Netta had prior convictions as a juvenile for theft and attempted burglary and as an adult for resisting a peace officer, burglary and unlawful possession of weapons by a felon. He was on parole at the time he committed the sex act with the 90-year-old woman, so that's why his ass got more time than everybody else. Netta's grandparents, who adopted him from their daughter at age two, both testified in hopes of getting defunded to impose a lesser sentence. His grandmother described him as a child who didn't like to sit in one spot too long, but said he was smart and made good grades and did not have problems with impulse control. It's funny how when these people commit all these heinous crimes, they start talking about when they was a damn child. Don't you know damn people grow and change? Don't you know what I'm saying? Children that you know right now that, that might uh was a good child or now Hellcat somewhere or now done 
kill people or rape people or whatever else around a neighborhood terrorizing people so just because somebody was a certain way as a child don't mean they're gonna grow and grow into that same adult because if that's the case you know we wouldn't have a lot of stuff going on in this world if if you will now Nella's grandfather told the judge he felt his grandson was unjustly convicted. Nella told the judge his grandparents raised him with good values and that his criminal history is not an accurate representation of my character. Then what it is then, I mean, if you done did all that and you around here sexually assaulting old women, something really wrong with you. Now he goes on to say, I'm sorry that I let myself fall victim to being led astray by Mr. Butler. I believe they got it wrong, he said, of the jury's verdict. But if that's the case, you got to understand something. You was already on parole for all these heinous charges, these weapon charges, these felony burglary charges, getting caught with stolen guns and stuff. So they put you on parole, and then you get caught up with this guy, uh, Shannon Butler, who who receives 14 years. But at the same time, Shannon wasn't on parole because if that's the case, hopefully they wouldn't allow him to work at the care facility that he was working at. And then secondly, you know, you have to understand you already in the system. So only thing they wait on you to do just slip up one more time and you slipped up in a major way when you went out here and convicted. I mean, uh, when you committed a sexual assault against a disabled person who's 90 years old and had dementia so you set yourself up for that so no matter what grandma say no matter what auntie say no matter what the your, your high school football coach say you know they can talk about they can show baby pictures of you riding ponies and stuff when you was young it don't matter because what you did subsides what happened in the past so you should have thought about all that before you got caught up but this is how it goes you know what i'm saying it's funny how when people when they going through these uh, through these situations they commit crimes and stuff they all cool and lovey dovey and everything patting each other on the back knowing exactly what they did you taking advantage of these people not realizing you really setting yourself up to get caught because this is not the first story that then came out of one of these care facilities where these people are supposed to be looking after the elderly and they taking advantage of the elderly whether they beating them up or whether they uh having sex with them or whether they uh getting money out of them some kind of way but anyway let me know what you all think about this story right here because you know we all have at least one person in our family, if not in the care facility, that has some type of illness, especially if they own up in age. Because, you know, the way you, the way we come in this world, helpless as a baby, is surely the way we're going to lead this world one day, helpless as an old person, you know. Because if, if you know, sure as you want to live, and I'm sure you don't want to die, even though we know we got to die someday. But I say that to say this right here, is that the same way we, we left, we came in helpless, the same way we're going to leave. We need somebody to care for us when we was young. And in our old age, we're going to need somebody to care for us then because you're not going to be able to do it yourself. And would you want to live all those years and then have somebody who's 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 young enough, or no matter if they're old enough, but somebody young enough to be your great, great, great grandchild to molest you and, and to sexually assault you? Think about that. That's why I say you need to check on your people, make sure they're all right no matter what you think about them. You know, put your emotions aside and think logically for a reason. You know, what if that was you in these nursing homes? What if that was you in these jails, these prisons, these institutions? You know what I'm saying? So look after your people if, if you love them. And even if you don't love them, still do it. Do it because you would want somebody to do it for you. Anyway, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button. If you like, subscribe. Definitely share the video. Till next time, y'all stay blessed and love one another. I'm out.